You can make junk food healthy. Well, that's something I never thought I'd hear. Nobody cares if you're bulking or cutting because they're both ruining your progress. Um, right. So apparently now if you bulk or cut, you're ruining progress. Well, then which one should you fucking do, Mario? I'm now just confused. I swear fitness influencers will just cut out every human possible option to live. You need to stop bench pressing because it's not the most aesthetic chest exercise. Well, aren't you fucking smart? Isn't the bench press the most normal chest exercise on the planet, though? Isn't it the thing that everyone does and gets the most results from? Jesus Christ, I can't wait to see how this guy justifies all the shit he's spewing onto the timeline. All right, everyone, welcome back. Today, TikTok's dumbest gym influencer, Mario Rios, actually got worse. About two months ago, I made a video on this gym influencer called Mario Rios, who is essentially a TikToker and YouTuber that posts some of the silliest gym opinions and gym advice I've ever seen on the platform. Now, he does say some things that do make sense and I do agree with, saying that if you're an athlete that you shouldn't train like a bodybuilder, I mean, that's obvious stuff, right? But his hatred towards bodybuilding building as a whole is something I really just can't get behind. The last Mario Rios video I did did extremely well, so clearly you all wanted a part two. So let's see just how much worse this guy really got. Stop doing bodybuilding poses because it makes you a geek. All right, bro, right off the bat. So now apparently you can't pose because it makes you a geek? I'm really interested to see how in the living f*** he's going to justify this one. I swear, if you've seen my previous videos on this guy, you'll know what I'm talking about, right? But this guy Mario seriously just has beef with everything. And I I don't understand why. Surely it's not that deep that you can't pose anymore. Do you care about how big you look so bad that you need to manipulate your body with poses just to look a little bit bigger? And I'm not even addressing angles, cameras, lighting, or editing. You're not walking around flexing. And if you did, you're just a nerdy douchebag. Believe it or not, what truly matters is what you look like in real life. This is the thing about this guy. What he says does make sense to an extent. You know, you're not walking around flexing all the time, so why does it matter what you look like while you're flexing? But who <laughs> fucking cares? I'm pretty sure there are more important things to be worrying about than people flexing in the mirror. I actually don't get this guy's issue here. Like, bro, if you're a bodybuilder whose goal is to have the best physique out of his competitors, he's gonna practice his posing because that makes him look better on stage. I get his point that you don't look like that walking around all the time, but saying that it's cringe and stupid and that you should just never do it, it's just unnecessary. Who cares? And to do that, you just have to look fit and healthy, and then you combine that with walking around with good posture. Apart from simple flexes that I or Leon Edwards do, they're just for bodybuilders who want to flex their muscles and front of dude. Well, yeah, that's the sport they've chosen. You can call that gay and it's just for dudes and blah 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 blah, which to be honest is kind of true. And me personally, I would even say that I don't really understand the appeal of bodybuilding. You guys in the Monk Army that have been watching me for a while would know that I play Australian rules football, which is a completely athletic sport. So I'm more on the athlete side here than anything. But putting down bodybuilders as a whole because you personally don't agree with what they do is the most stupid shit I've ever heard. Just because you don't like a sport doesn't undervalue the work and dedication that bodybuilders put into making themselves look good on stage. I found bodybuilding super studs. They say you can't run fast and lift heavy. But watch us, baby. Let's go hybrid. Imagine bragging that you can lift weights and run when it's something you should be doing anyway. Because of the rise of the fitness matrix and lazy ass bodybuilding, people think it's one or the other. Bro, what are you yapping about? I mean, you had me there for a little bit, right? It should have been a given that you can run and lift weights at the same time if you're a normal human being. But bro, the fitness matrix? Anytime I hear the word matrix, Matrix get thrown around from now on. I know that these guys are just trying way too hard to sound smart and like they're above everyone else. The fitness matrix has to be one of the goofiest terms I've ever heard in my life. You can either lift a lot of weight or you can move and run well. But that's just when fitness becomes ego driven and runners become pussy. That's why athletic bodybuilding will always be the best as why not have an athletic physique that looks aesthetic, lift a lot of weight, change directions well, and run super fast. Yeah, that's all fine and well. And I'm sitting here agreeing with this as that's what I train for. I train to be able to run fast, lift a lot of weight, and be relatively well-sized. But guess what, Mario? For other people in sport, they just don't need that. For example, runners need to be a lot smaller. The guy who broke the marathon world record by doing it in under two hours is literally 50 kg in body weight. You might sit here and say that he's fragile because of that, and oh, he might not be able to bench press as much as you. But guess what, Mario? He doesn't need to get any bigger. And that's the same for people like Chris Bumstead and other bodybuilders. They're successful in their chosen sport of bodybuilding. Sure, it's not functional, in other areas of life, but for their sport, it is. I do agree that you need to take into consideration how training for your chosen sport affects you in real life, but dismissing someone's entire sport because you don't look athletic doing it is just the stupidest shit I've ever heard. This jumping trivia game is f***ed up. What is the coldest continent? Antarctica. Yeah. You got me. <laughs> Holy How many days are there usually in February? 28. Rachel is 140 pounds and Heather is 100 pounds. Rachel is how much percent heavier than Heather? 20%. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, Once the jumps actually got challenging, neither guy was even jumping any higher. They just tested their skill of imitating a frog by tucking their legs over the bar. Okay, bro, really? Like I said, bro, this guy just has beef with everything. Mario, does it really fucking matter that much that these guys aren't testing their real legitimate vertical jump and maybe look a little bit silly jumping over the bar because they're tucking their legs in? Like, it's just not that deep. Do you really want to make these videos fun and exciting? You might want to actually test these guys vertical, which is done by testing their reach. So get a basketball hoop and steadily increase its height. I don't care if it's inconvenient to carry a hoop around. I think it's fair to say these guys aren't going to listen to you. Mario, I hope you do realize that just because they're tucking their legs in doesn't mean that they're not testing their vertical jump. Sure, keeping your legs tucked in and reaching for something is a more accurate way of testing. But bro, this video is clearly just some fun trivia game. No one actually gives a shit what these guys' verticals are. And also, even then, these guys are both jumping on the same playing field, so Bruh. the test is valid anyway. Whoever doesn't jump over the bar first has obviously the smaller vertical jump. I don't get this guy's point here. Sam Selig's health is deteriorating. And I'm bleeding a little bit through my shirt. Not from popping a pimple. That's OG like year ago type vibes. Uh, like my back acne was fucking, well actually my acne all over, shoulders, arms, back, everything. That's where I squat. I kind of have like calluses built up on my back. If you watch this clip with your eyes closed, you'd think a fat obese person was talking to you. Bro was out of breath talking about his steroid problem. Okay, well that's just fucking stupid. Hey Mario, it's almost like Sam Sullick, the guy known for doing daily gym vlogs, filming himself working out, probably just got done filming himself working out and his body is currently recovering from that. And newsflash, when you're recovering, immediately after a workout, you're probably going to be out of breath. Now, I do agree that Sam Sullick is a lot bigger, so obviously he's going to be prone to getting out of breath a lot quicker than normal people. But what does that have to do with his health? Like it or not, Sam Sullick's just a bad person with shit hormone levels. Bro is bleeding through his shirt. Sure, that just sounds like an aesthetic issue, but it's so unhealthy. I mean, I just don't think that that's how that works. Sam just said he has calluses on his back from probably squatting a ton. That's got nothing to do with his health, bro. That just means that he's obviously got a fuck ton of weight on the bar. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna sit here and argue that what Sam Selleck does on his diet and his training is at all healthy. He eats 5,000 calories of bullshit food every day. Obviously, he's not a health icon. But to say that he's just some stupid fat person completely undermines what he does. Also, I know it's kind of irrelevant, but choosing Sam Selleck as a target for your YouTube short probably isn't the smartest thing in the world to do. The amount of people who are probably gonna spam dislike your videos and start hating you from this is beyond the charts. If you're curious about how that went away, it was Accutane. Accutane can help you look healthy on the outside, but on the inside, Sam Selleck has below average elderly man health status. Well, I wouldn't say he has that right now. But yes, I do agree that if he keeps doing what he's doing, bulking with cereal, burgers, fries, and milkshakes and shit like that, then yes, his health will deteriorate further. But bro, the guy is 21. I mean, at the moment, he can get away with it. Also, in saying all this, right, if this video gets 1,000 likes right now, I'll make my own video on Sam Selleck. Not completely ripping the guy apart because I do like him, but just sitting here talking about my honest opinions on him because I don't agree with everything he does. I don't hate the guy, but I do agree that his style of training and eating is definitely not sustainable. Sal Sulex doesn't even train hard. <laughs> <laughs> Pros get a whole roster ready for him for a drop set, which is where after your main set, you drop the weight immediately to crank out a couple more reps. Regarding drop sets, if you are truly training hard enough, not only do you not need a drop set, but the drop set's just junk volume and leading to more fatigue. All right, I have so much shit to say. Firstly, bro, Sal Sulek. Who the <laughs> fuck is Sal Sulek? Secondly, it would actually be nice for you to explain how on the planet Earth drop sets are bad. What this guy's probably trying to say is that drop sets aren't necessary for him, which is probably true. If this guy's main goal isn't hypertrophy and getting as big as possible, then sure, you probably don't need a drop set. But to sit there and say it's junk volume when it's clearly been shown in multiple studies to increase muscle size is stupid as shit. For athletes, right, sure, drop sets are probably junk volume. But for a bodybuilder who needs the extra muscle, then it's probably not junk volume, is it? It's actually beneficial. Again, this all just comes back to this guy for some reason not accepting that bodybuilding is a real thing. Anyways, I'm done with Mario Rios. Click the video on screen right now because YouTube thinks you'll enjoy and I'll see you all over there. Subscribe.